Today's build is going to be a really cool one. And if you know anything about lawnmower racing, they will let you race with just about anything. And if you've ever seen the front end of a lawnmower, it is pretty ranky dank. In fact, I've seen some pretty darn good crashes in the last couple of years with lawnmower racing. And a lot of them are related back to steering in some shape or form. So our first step is we're actually going to grab some bar stock that's already on size from the scrap wall there and we're gonna part it partially to length. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually just cutting a little bit of a lip in there. It's, it's kind of a relief for the angles that we're gonna cut in. In hindsight, I probably should have done it a little bit different. I should have cut the first angle on there, then parted that a little bit in there, and then cut the other angle, but that's okay. So there's a little bit of play in here. I was hoping to actually take this in one pass and get it all done, but as you notice, I'm kind of making it in steps. and. That's actually because as I'm turning my cross compound cross slide in there, the actual cross slide, the big one, is, the saddle's actually moving a little bit back from it. So I'm going to have to kind of cut it a little bit at a time and not be so greedy. Now that we got it pretty darn close to what we're looking for, we need to cut the other side. And it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of changing our cross slide over to the other direction and cutting that little bit of an angle in there. Now I have to apologize, I don't know exactly what the angle is here right now off the top of my head, but I'm going to post it in the, in the notes below if I can, and I'll probably throw it up on the screen right about here, so you guys can have a closer look at it and kind of work out that angle yourself. Although, let's be honest, that angle is not exactly crucial, it's just kind of to give it a bit of relief so when it turns, and to cut a bit of that weight back, because racing's all about weight too, right? Now, I know what a lot of the machinists out there are thinking, especially the experienced machinist, is why didn't you cut this angle first instead of cutting this angle last? Well, you know what? You're probably right. It probably would have been a lot more rigid and it probably would have given me a little bit better of a service finish. And on the second time around, I actually did cut this angle first and then cut the other one. But really, that's not here nor there. Now, let's slide in the parting tool, size this up and part this tool off. So after I put this part away here, I'm gonna take this parting tool and I'm gonna butt it up alongside the work. And then I'm gonna zero my DRO. Then I'm gonna go over the 115th out, the thickness of the tool bit, and I'm gonna zero it again. And from there, I can go all the way over to the left-hand side. And then now I can actually really just look at my blueprint. And if it's the same measurement as it is on the blueprint, I can just part it off. And that'll give me the exact length that I'm looking for here. Now let's take a moment to talk about safety. Now you probably know better than grabbing that so it doesn't fall into the chip tray and it's super unsafe to do that. So I'm gonna really refrain today from doing that and I'm actually gonna stop the machine and then I'm gonna break it off by hand and then it'll fall into the chip tray anyways. And should I actually mention that that's gonna be hot as balls and I'm burning my hand on it? But I think you guys already know that. All right, now our next step is to actually put stuff away for change. And we're gonna throw this part in here. Keep in mind, we're actually making two of these, one left, one right, and they're exactly the same, essentially. So we got a game of hide and go seek now. We're, we're looking for our center drill. Um, ah, man, you know what? It's a bit of a mess in the shop. You guys have seen my video on how clean my shop was on my little tour. Well, it's kind of falling apart again. And we're gonna look around for the center drill here and. Would you look at that? We have some brand new center drills. We're not going to need this anymore. Let's treat ourselves to some brand new center drills today and actually cut this and not have any problems with it breaking off in our work. Now, normally most guys in their shops, they don't use a drill chuck to actually use a center drill. There's actually a special center drill holder that is pretty darn easy to make and I probably should make one at some point. But for today, we're just going to throw this bad boy in the drill chuck because it's going to work all the same and we're going to center drill this and get it right on the mark. For those guys out there that are new to machining, the purpose of the center drill is essentially it stops the drill bit from walking all over and you essentially drill right in the center. You see a normal drill bit will kind of wander off. Now for the next step is we got to find a tap and die and drill this hole and tap it. And you don't really need a tap gauge. Essentially you could just match these threads up here Look to see what's on the tap, and if your outside diameter of the tap is the same, you've got it, bingo bango, you're off to the races. Now, this is going to be a matter of looking through all the drills and trying to find the actual size. 
a little bit easier said than done. And man, obviously the half inch is not the same size that we're looking for. <laughs> now I'm measuring the root here, the, the root of the thread, and it's kind of a cheat method. You're measuring between the two Vs and the smaller diameter of the bolt is pretty close to what you're gonna tap it as. I would highly recommend that you actually look at a drill tap chart, but it's a good way to double check. Now, would you believe it? Here we no go, way. we got the actual size. Now, she's pretty loosey-goosey in the shop here. I mean, I'm telling you, we gotta clean this place up. It's, <laughs> it's gotta happen soon. But for now, let's get back to the project here and get this hole drilled and get this all tapped out. Now, let's play a small game. Does that RPM look like the right RPM for the drilling speed that you're drilling at? And I'm pretty sure you've pretty much figured it out by now, especially once I start drilling, that that is definitely the wrong speed. Now, a lot of those chips are coming off smoking hot, and if you look at the actual color of that chip there, it's way darker than it needs to be. So let's drop that speed down, bring it down to the right RPM that we're looking for, and it's gonna kick off a light golden chip to maybe a silver chip. Anything hotter than that on a high-speed steel, you're gonna burn your drill bit out, and you're gonna be getting real good at sharpened drill bit. But I think for today, we stopped it soon enough, and we still got it pretty hot, but we're gonna be okay for today. And let's not pull any punches. I'm gonna throw that back in the drawer and play the lottery game of whether it's gonna drill the right size later. So I'm gonna do a little cheat method here. And usually I do this just to start the threads on. And also, it's also a really good way to rub off the writing on your taps as well. Um, I've got a few like that. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna kind of feed it in, turn it by hand for the first two or three threads. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna bring the tap handle in there with the live center and we're gonna do it this way here. Now, the reason why I do it the other way is, is it's gonna get it straight right out of the gate, and there's a little less moving parts to this. So, one of the things that we're gonna to have to do here is we're gonna actually lock this tailstock in. Now, I could put a little bit of pressure on it with my right hand, and then turn that by hand, and it would still work, but what I'm gonna do here is, this might actually come with a bit of feeling that you have to gain is you're going to spin the chuck and you're going to spin the actual tailstock and you got to spin them just right to keep that pressure on to keep it straight because if you do too much you're actually going to mess up the threads on the inside there i'm sure there's probably an easier way to do in this and man if you got an idea throw some comments down in the comment section i'd love to hear some input on how you do this in the lathe because i bet you there's probably an easier way than i'm doing this and from here on in i'm kind of just gonna twist it in by hand. Now, one of the drawbacks of what I'm doing here is, is it actually puts a bit of an angle tension on it. I don't know if I can even say that, but it puts a bit of like a tension on the side and it can bell mouth a bit of your threads if you do it like this. But realistically, man, you know, once we get past two or three threads and we get like eight or nine threads, we're not overly too concerned about that. And this is gonna hold it in just fine. Now, let's take this over to the mill machine and do some dreaded math for the actual spindle that's gonna go in there. Now, lots of guys get really intimidated on this, but man, you know what? We have technology. There's technology. You got your phone in your pocket. Probably you're watching this on your phone, this, this YouTube video. And man, you can find out anything you wanna do. Essentially, what we're gonna do here is we need five degrees, the opposite of 85, which is on the blueprint. So we punch in over 1.5, and the five degrees, and then it's gonna spit out that 131 number, and that tells us that our dial over an inch and a half is actually gonna to have to lift up 131 thou. Man, I can't even imagine going back 20, 30 years before we had all these smartphones in our pockets, looking through the machinist machinery handbook and like getting the calculator out and doing the math. Man, because this is just so easy. It's just a matter of hitting zero, going over an inch and a half, following the deal. Man, it's it's pretty much cookie cutter, easy, safe. Now, let's just go over an inch and a half, see how much it drops. And of course, we never get it on the first try or the second, and we just give it a bit of a tap up. And then we basically go back and forth until we get it. And usually it takes two or three times, maybe four, and then you've got her bang on, and you're ready to go. Now we know we have 
an 85 degree hole getting drilled in there. And let's get that all set up and let's drill her through. But before we do that, we're actually gonna cut a little flat spot on there just so that we can kind of, I don't know, it's more cosmetic than anything. And we're gonna grab the fly cutter. We got it at the angle, everything's bolted down. And we're just gonna cut a little tiny flat on there. Now, to be frankly honest, I don't think it's really necessary. It's not even included in the blueprint that I'm gonna provide, but it just kind of looks a little bit better and it gets a little bit more of a shoulder for that, that shaft to hold on to everything. Like. And I should probably jump on to KBC or, or wherever and, and grab, myself, grab myself some new cutters because this is getting pretty darn dull. Now, our next step that we're gonna have here is we're gonna have to find center and it's pretty darn easy with DRO. We're just gonna come over we're going to bring it up to the edge and it moves over there. We're going to zero it. And then we're going to find the edge on the other jaw. Now, pretty much after this, it's pretty darn simple math. You take your 1.3, you divide it by two. That gives you 6.5. I don't need no smartphone making me dumb. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get this on the first try. But <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to check my math. But anyways... We're feeling pretty spendy today. Actually, I'm not gonna lie to you, KBC Tools is pretty cool to give me some center drills and I really appreciate that. Thank you, KBC Tools. And we're gonna drill all these with the center drill. Now, and essentially it's the same operation that we had on the lathe. I mean, it just stops it from walking everywhere. Then we're gonna come back in here with our drill bit. And this is gonna be the drill bit that's actually gonna drill the hole that's gonna accept that spindle for the wheel to go on. And to be frankly honest, it doesn't have to be super precise because I haven't made that spindle wheel anyways. I just have to make sure I don't drill a hole in my table when I go all the way through. Now, let's grab some scrap steel off the wall that's already kind of pretty much already to size so that it'll slide right on all our bearings. And the first step's pretty darn easy. That's right, we're gonna cut this to length and then we're gonna machine it from there. And machining it to length is pretty darn easy. Like I said before, I'm gonna to touch off on that base at 115 thou, roll over the actual length of the shaft, and then I'm gonna cut this off. Now, a special note here, if you look at the blueprint that I've, I've provided there for you, now this spindle actually came up a little bit short. You might wanna actually make sure that you add it. I think we should have added another inch onto the spindle, but it still worked in the end. It just didn't quite work exactly the way we want it. I'm pretty sure your race lawnmower is going to be a little bit different than this one, but at least all of this stuff is going to give you a great place to start for it. So now essentially our first operation that we're going to do with all this, well second I guess, is we're going to cut the outside diameter of this bar to fit inside that tapered thingamadoodle, and it should be pretty easy. Essentially we measure the inside, we hit zero on this, we measure the outside of the shaft that we're cutting and it tells us the difference that we need to take off. Now, you know, I, they say that you're supposed to just be able to, you know, measure once, cut twice. I mean, measure twice, cut once, but you know what I mean. So I like to measure twice and then cut once, but essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna double check my work and make sure that I'm not gonna overshoot my dimensions. And it's a good thing we did because we had a little bit of deflection in there. So I kind of got a follow up and kind of make a straighter cut because I was cutting a little bit too heavy on there. And it's gonna cut a little heavy on the front end and then go a little lighter as we get a further down the shaft here because it, it kind of bent a little bit. Some kind of flex somewhere. But that's okay, we caught it before it went wrong. And now let's take the part out and actually have a fit up and see if it's gonna work. And you know what, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a pretty good fit. We'll be able to tap that on weld on the end and you know what bob's your uncle or or gary or jerry or whoever whoever she identifies as so i'm kind of building this as i go so i grabbed a nut out of the, the junk drawer and it's the same size diameter as the shaft and this is essentially how i'm going to figure out how to cut my threads and to what threads and what size this is giving me an idea of what nuts going to go on here right so now i'm going to move my compound i'm going to move that to 30 degrees i believe it is and then we're gonna make sure our tool bit is on the level. Essentially, I use a ruler on the tip, and when the ruler's level, well, vertical, I should say, that tells you that you're right on center. So the next step in our operation is, we're gonna cut a relief on the back side of where the thread's gonna be. Now, the purpose of this is we cut our threads, 
it gives me a couple seconds to stop the lathe or pull it out and disengage everything and then roll it back while we cut our threads. After I cut a little bit of an angle in the front side here, it's going to make a lot more sense as we cut our threads. In the gearbox on the lathe, I've already set everything to the right threads per inch, and now it's just a matter of taking our first pass and kind of comparing everything. Now, I've got to do it kind of a different way. Most people have that little thread dial thing on there, and they can just disengage and re-engage it when it comes around to one or two or whatever you choose. I've actually got to turn my lathe off, pull it out, and then throw it in reverse. Now, it works pretty basic, pretty simple, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass to turn the lathe off, reverse it each time. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Maybe later down the line, we're actually gonna make a thread dial and we're actually gonna cast at all that parts. But that's gonna be coming up at springtime and that's a totally another conversation for another time. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a, a brand new nut here to kind of size up the threads. I'm kind of using it as a go, no-go gauge. Now, it's kind of from personal experience here, knowing what's gonna go and what's not. Now, from personal experience, I know that this is gonna work and I can turn this on by hand with a wrench and it's not gonna bind up super big. Essentially, what's stopping this from turning on right now is there's a little tiny burr at the very top of the peak of the thread. I hope you're following me here. And it's stopping it from going on. What I should have done is I probably should have chased that with a die of the correct size for the threads and cut it in. But you know what? This is kind of an experience thing. I'm just gonna kind of form fit and get rid of that little bit of a thread on the top. And I think we're good to go on here. And we got a really good fit consequently because of it. Now, it's just a matter of taking this bad boy out, sliding into the angled thingy, the base. I'm not sure what we should even call that yet. <laughs> <laughs> and giving it a really good weld in the shop. And really sorry guys, I didn't include the welding part in the video, but I'm pretty sure you can imagine what it would be like to weld the back side of that. But I did include the final product of what it looks like. And you know what? This has been a really good ray season. Aaron has really come out shining this year. And he's got a few firsts from a bunch of different places in the province. And we're really proud of all the great work that he's done. Oh hey, and here's a blooper. Ooh, that one's fucked up. Whoa. 32,000. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Fuck. 